Good morning. Welcome to services at the Jack Street Church of Christ. It's good to see all of you again. This is what I look like, and that's I look better this way. So this is like you. Uh, we're so glad you could be with us. Uh, for our visitors, uh, this is an odd Sunday. Usually if we have a visitor in the crowd, um, the, the Jack Street folks just, you know, just go all around there, but we're not supposed to do that. So don't uh, uh, take that as, as a note. We're, we're glad to see everyone here again. And uh, we appreciate your uh, forbearance and your patience as we work through this first uh, service back after being gone for a little bit. A couple of uh, uh, nuts and bolts. When you came in, if you're participating in communion today, you, you should have a bag with, um, um, with one uh, service of communion in it. If you need to go get one, you can go ahead and get, uh, get that from the back or the entrance closest to you at, at any time. Uh, we will not be collecting these during communion. You'll take care of Did you notice the trash cans as you walked in by each door? Okay, that's for you. You'll take it and, and uh, you'll take care of that on yourself. And don't worry, I'll remind you at the closing prayer to kind of look around and you know, police the area. Also, with today's service, we will, you, did you hear the recorded a cappella singing? Okay, so we'll be using that along with some slides up on the, on the screen. And uh, do you remember the issues we had with our projector? system or that, that seems like ages ago doesn't it okay well paul garrison had worked very hard and uh, and trent uh deloge had worked on that and we think we got those things fixed so we can enjoy that um news that i know of uh, nancy uh, terry is improving and then doing doing okay but still having to deal with the physical therapy um glenda adams told me today that randall adams is He's, there's still no change in his position, uh, in his situation, but he is in Little Rock, and Glenda's in Little Rock, staying at their with their daughter, and he's having some more blood tests run to see what his situation is there. And um, I know there's been other uh, sick and, and, and uh, issues that are shared with the group, me in the email. On behalf of the elders, I want to thank you for your participation today. Um, and I know that others will be participating later on video as we work through these changes. I also want to thank you for keeping up with church news on GroupMe, emails, personal text messages, personal phone calls, and encouragement, and cards, and, and, and things. So the church has been very active. Um, I'll uh, start with an opening prayer, then I'll turn it over to, uh, to Brian Mickey. He's behind me, isn't he? Okay, you're right. I can't see anything, you know. <laughs> yeah, all righty. But so good to be with you. Brian, did I forget anything? Okay, all right, I've got to check and cover. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much that we could get together today in, in, in person. Um, we're thankful for our, our government leaders and the Department of Health that have given us guidance. Father, we know that you are working through them as well as you are working through us. Um, Father, we don't know where this will all end up, but we know that one day we will end up with you and with each other singing forever your praises. We're thankful for this time of worship and communion that we can have with one another. Be with us today as we worship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. It is so good to be with you here today. And at the same time, I, I do lament with those who can't be here quite yet. And for those who will watch our video, if you're needing to stay home, please know we understand and we, we love you, we support you, and we encourage you to continue to be faithful in attending online a little bit longer if you need to. Uh, I want you to open up your Bibles to Philippians 4, and we're going to go ahead and read the text for today's sermon. And I hope that you've been reading your Bibles. I hope you've been studying God's Word during this time. And whether you have or not, I would encourage you to specifically read the Philippian letter about once a week if you can. Philippians is a letter about encouragement. It is a letter about joy. And those are two things that we need in our lives right now. Am I right? I'm in chapter 4 today. And during the sermon, in just a few moments, we're going to concentrate on contentment. But on the way there, I want you to glance at verse 8 for just a moment. Because part of being content has to do uh, with being a Christian and being at peace with God. And Paul helps explain some things that really will help us be content. In verse 8, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just... Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, 
If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. And then we come to the section that I'm going to spend the most time on today. And I asked you to read it in Friday's email. But in verse 10, Paul is pleased that this church has wanted to help him in different ways. But he says you had no opportunity. And in fact, he didn't really need their help. Because at the end of verse 11, look at it. He says, I have learned in whatever situation I am in to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In just a few moments, we're going to further investigate verse 13. And we're going to explore the secret to contentment. Before we do that, though, we're, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds to take communion, if you want to get that out of your package. turn to Mark, the 14th chapter, and I'll start reading in verse 22. And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And He took the cup, and when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And He said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Pray with me. Our dear Heavenly Father in heaven, as we so humbly come before you in prayer today, we come thanking you for this day, this wonderful and beautiful day that we can gather as a family and partake of what we refer to as the Lord's Supper. 
We pray, Heavenly Father, that each of us may partake of this bread and the fruit of the vine in such a manner that will be well-pleasing unto thee. For in Christ's name we do humbly pray. Amen. back up to Philippians 4 and as you do that I want to acknowledge I, I know that we have uh, well I, I, I know what we've endured these past few months has been hard in several ways and it will no doubt continue to be challenging for us but I'll tell you I'm also very thankful that we have had the technology to stay connected in some way and that that we've been able to worship together even if it is not perfect in our eyes. You know, our adapting, adapting our worship in different ways has certainly been a struggle. And again, it's not been perfect to us at all. But you know, I imagine, imagine us trying to adapt in different ways when there was no internet. You may not know about it, but during the Spanish flu outbreak in 1918, many churches of Christ across the nation also closed their doors to help mitigate the spread of that deadly virus. But they did not have the technology, obviously, that we have been using. And, and I, I just want to say I'm th very thankful for the many people who have been working in different ways to bring worship into our homes each week so that not every family was just out there trying to fend for themselves in every way. In some ways, we returned, and we still are to some extent, uh, we return to the house churches that you read about in the New Testament. 
People like Nympha, Lydia, Philemon, others are mentioned in the Bible as having meet, people meet in their homes. Uh, and so we've had a number of house churches as well, and we will continue to have those as we go along here. And although we have and we will continue to be separated in many ways, worshiping at different times and different places in some instances, uh, I know that we're going to continue to be committed to being united in so many ways. Right? We're going to be united in serving the exact same God. United in worshiping in spirit and in truth. United in the same purpose and in the same love for one another. We're going to continue to be united in our giving. Continue to be united in looking at the exact same cross and the exact same Savior that the people meeting in Philemon's house looked at. You know, I heard a man recently try to describe kind of what we are going through right now. And it was helpful to me because he likened it to the weather. And he, he said that it, it seems like we kind of enter into this, we kind of entered into it thinking maybe it was a little snowstorm that comes along. You know, you run to the Walmart, you get the bread and you get the milk and school's out for a couple of days. Well, it wasn't just a snowstorm, was it? It's kind of been a blizzard of sorts. And I know that you are praying, just like me, that it doesn't become an ice age of some kind. You know, And I don't believe that's going to happen, but I will tell you that while we don't know exactly what the future holds, we know who holds the future. Amen? We know that. Even in the best of circumstances, we know very little about tomorrow, but we know the God of tomorrow. He's the same God who carried His people through the past, through the problems and struggles that we read about all the way back in Genesis and Exodus. He's the same God who carries us today and He will continue to be with us no matter what challenges may come our way. It is because of these truths that as Christians, we can be content even as we walk this current road of difficulty. Many people call Philippians 4.13 their favorite verse in the entire Bible. How many? Raise your hands if that would be you. Philippians 4.13. Okay. Yeah. See some hands? I remember one of the polls over here that we wrote on. Several people put Philippians 4.13, their favorite verse. We know it by heart. Right? This is one of those verses that, that we know by heart. I can do all things through Christ... Who gives me strength? And I love the fact that Paul is writing about contentment from a prison. Right? So you can be assured that his lot in life is not perfect. And as we look around us today, we recognize things in our world are not perfect. But Paul teaches us in Philippians 4 that we can be content. And I want you to notice in both verses 11 and 12, he says he learned to be content in whatever situation he is in. He says, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret. Okay, Paul. You learned the secret. What's the secret? Right? Teach me. Tell us the secret of how to face any and every circumstance no matter what the day may bring. And Paul responds with that verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the secret. And I want to very quickly break down that verse into five parts today. And it's going to be five secrets to contentment. And I would expect all of us to take these and study them further on your own. We won't have the time to develop them fully. Uh, if you read the sneak peek email on Friday, you know that they all start with, with the letter P. Right? Secret number one. The first secret to contentment is to be positive. Right? Be positive. Look at how Paul starts the verse. I can. Not I might or I hope or I should. If everything works out just the way I think it should. That's not what he says. I can. He is able 
It is a very positive statement helping to reveal the, some of the secrets to contentment even during this blizzard. Now, in order for us today to be positive, I was thinking, well, okay, what are some very practical things that we might do to be positive? One of the things I thought of was to turn off the 24-hour news cycle on TV. I know several people that have done that during this time. I've done some of that same thing. Maybe we stay away from some of the negativity, some of the negative people on some social media. Right? Now that may mean that you have to push snooze on Facebook, or you might have to watch reruns of Andy Griffith. But you know what? That was a pretty good show, wasn't it? Wasn't Andy Griffith a good show? Positive. Be positive. Better yet, you have it in your lap. You probably have it in 25 different languages or more on your iPad. Open up your Bible and focus on God. We serve a positive God. A positive God that has a positive message of hope about our true future. Right? And you can glance back up at verse 8 and see some of those types of positive things that Paul talks about to dwell on. Whatever is true and honorable and lovely and so forth. Again, we should be able to take that further on ourselves later, maybe and study that later today. But secret number one, be positive. Number two, number two is be passionate. Look at the next three words. Do all things. I can do all things things. Not a few, not some, not even most. All. All. And instead of the word things, it might be better for you to think about the word uh, enduring all conditions in life. Because I think that really fits the context of what Paul is writing about here in Philippians 4. I mean, look at it. Paul talks about it in, in these verses. He discusses the different conditions that he endured and yet remained content. I know how to be hungry. right? I know how to live as I abound even. But the statement, all things, shows passion. It portrays this intense desire to include every moment of life, every circumstance, and not just the best ones. Not just the best moment or the best events in life. Be passionate. Secret number two. That will help with contentment. Number three. Number three is the fact that we need to be possessive. I can. Positive. Right? Do all things. with That's passion. And now we are possessive in the sense that we possess, we take hold of something that's really the key to this whole thing. The key to contentment. And that is that we need to possess Christ. I can do all things through Christ. You know, we, we search for contentment in so many wrong places in our lives. Right? And I bet if, if you've struggled in your spiritual walk while you've been away, you've probably gone after contentment in some other area when true contentment is only found through Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. As you study this idea further on your own, I want to encourage you to take your New Testament and look through it especially for two phrases. One of them is through Christ. And the other phrase is in Christ. And with the technology we have today, you can go to the internet and you can search the New Testament for those phrases. Through Christ and in Christ. And you know what you're going to find? You're going to find a list of spiritual blessings that are available to us. Right? If you can do that and study those spiritual blessings connected to those two phrases, you are going to come away blessed beyond belief 
if you have been baptized into Christ Jesus. You see, we must possess Christ in some way. And here we have to keep reading to learn more about some of that because Paul here in these verses, he stresses the, the strength of Christ. Right? Secret number four. This is about possessing power. Be powerful. And what I'm talking about here, of course, is the strengthening that comes through Christ Jesus. You know, the Greek word that's used there, um, it has with it this sense of enabling a person. And I know when we talk about enabling somebody, we use that in a negative way, right? Almost always. There's nothing negative about the way Christ enables us. There's nothing negative about how Christ causes within us the ability, the capacity is probably a better word, the capacity for every condition of life. We can endure. We can through Christ. And I know, I know, we feel out of sorts this morning a little bit, don't we? <laughs> I keep looking over here expecting to see Martha and she's sitting over here. And I can't tell if she's smiling or frowning at me. You don't know if I'm smiling at you either, do you? We feel out of sorts. There's people that will watch on the video later this afternoon and they're going to feel out of sorts because they can't be here at the building today. But you know what? We can endure. And those of you watching, you can too. You can too. I know people have faced financial difficulties. Some of us have had friends and family members who have been very sick with this. But we can endure. We can be content because Christ enables us to do so. He gives us the capacity for this and for every other condition that we may come across. Secret number five. Very simple two-letter word. Me. And it speaks to the fact that that strength comes through Christ and it is a personal strength. Be personal about accepting Christ's strength and about applying it in your life. At any time, under any condition, we can rightly lift up our voices and say, this is for me. And I, I believe that's one of the reasons why this verse is so popular. It's so well established as one of our favorites. Paul wrote it in that first person kind of way, didn't he? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In my moment of weakness, or in a moment when we're feeling unsure, those words can quickly become our own personal words if we will allow them to. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I said a moment ago we know very little about what tomorrow holds. But whatever may come, the contentment that comes through the power of Christ, His strength, right? His strength to endure, that give us the capacity to continue to thrive even, that can come to each and every one of us in a very personal way. Because of these truths, in many ways, we can dismiss the troubles of today. And I know that sounds very simplistic at, at first, and I guess it is in some ways. But we, re we know people who endure lots and lots of things. I've seen people dismiss the troubles of today. 
Because they have a strength that they're relying on. And no matter how deep the snow, he must be crazy. He's talking about snow this morning. I don't even know why I went. <laughs> no matter how deep the snow gets, no matter how bitterly cold the wind may blow during the blizzard, we can learn contentment. And you know what? We can continue to pass on these secrets to other people as well. And I'm going to continue to tell you that this is our moment. This is our moment to shine. We must not let this moment pass by without answering the call of God. Some of those churches in 1918 stopped meeting together in worship, but they opened their building as a hospital. Some of those same people that came in helping with no medical degrees, just coming in to help, some of them died helping others. This is our moment. This is our moment to shine and answer the call. It starts with contentment. And then we move forward. I'm going to close there today. And as we do, you should know we're not going to have a formal invitation song, but by now, I hope you understand that the invitation to become a child of God is always open. The invitation to ask for prayers of your brothers and sisters is always open. There is never a need to wait for some special song to be sung at church. That is a tradition that has been passed down. In fact, I am so thankful during this difficult time, we've had people ask for prayers. We've had people come and ask for prayers for forgiveness and people that have been restored. We started this thing with a baptism at the Cope's house. You remember that? We rejoice with all those things with the angels up in heaven, right? If you do have a spiritual need that we can help you with, we do, when, when we are dismissed, if you want to go back to our Family Life Center, just go back there by my office. I'll be there in just a moment or one of our elders will come back there. We'd be happy to sit down with you, pray with you if you need to. If you want to be baptized today, do not wait. Do not wait. There will not be a more convenient time. Do not let anything be a barrier to you getting your life right with God and seeking His favor. May God bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and continue to be gracious to you. May He look on you and give you peace this week and forever.
Thank you, Brian, for the, the good lesson. It's been good to be here today and to see all of you. Um, we have another blessing that I want to, 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 to emphasize on. This is by no means the, the end result of everything, but during this uh, pandemic, while we were gone, do you remember that we added four elders to our leadership? And I'd like those, my, my peer elders, if you would also stand. Also, the, the elders are also being, uh, helping with being ushers. So uh, for our elders, on all of our elders, would you please stand, please? There's a couple of reasons for this. So we got Danny Stanford, and I see Bob, and Steve Zorse is in the back. Larry Terry, yeah, go ahead and rise up. If you, um, is anybody else in the tent? See, Roy, Roy Keith is, yeah, where's Paul? Where's Paul McClendon? Okay, he's back there someplace. Yeah, you need to stand. It, take a look. Um, if you need prayers, Brian mentioned going to the Family Life Center in his office. You can seek out one of us as well if there's something you know to, to you know, call on us. We'll be around to take a look. Um, as we dismiss today, after I lead a closing prayer, um, one of these men or, or one of the deacons will dismiss you and your family group. Don't all get up at one time. Just wait. You know, kind of like the do. You know, at weddings but without the pews, okay? And uh, leave, exit the uh, door that you came in or the, the closest door, if at all possible. And as you leave the door, remember to uh, take your communion uh, Ziploc bag and throw it in the trash can. Um, but don't toss your, if you brought a contribution today, don't chunk, chunk that in there with the bag. You know, we got a, a boxes for those if you brought a contribution today. We have the brown envelopes uh, by the contribution boxes if you want to use one. It's certainly not a requirement. Uh, we're so thankful, and I wanted to thank God for, um, um, I thank God for a congregation, but also for the addition of elders that we were able to still uh, move along with that. Uh, Mark Keith is not able to be here today, and uh, Roy Keith is, is at home. You know, where that, that was where he needed to be today. Uh, we'll all close with a closing prayer and then uh, wait to be dismissed uh, by someone will come to you and one of the ushers. Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you have given us. We are thankful for our church. We're thankful for our family. Father, help us to be, uh, to exemplify in our actions and our words and our thoughts the, the things that Brian's, uh, that you put on Brian's heart to speak to us about from Philippians. We know that we can do all things through Christ. Father, help us to know what the words that Christ said and the examples that he led in his life to break down barriers of prejudice and, and suffering and fear. Father, help us to be courageous and to work with each other. And Father, thank you so much for the ways that you have blessed this church with the addition of, of, uh, of, of more elders for our leadership. We're thankful for Brian and Joel and their families and the work that Brian and Joel have done in our facility work uh, today. In your sense now, I pray. Amen.